Machine limits can also be set for the turning and turn mill machine simulation models. With these machines there are some additional considerations. For machines that have components that share axes, for example multiple turrets and spindles, you can choose which axes to move from the pull down menu in the jog function. Now in this particular example I've loaded in the machine tool design file for a GMX 400S. In this case I've already specified their limits and I've gone ahead and done this by going into my machine design tab and choosing the specify movement function. In each case I've interactively selected the component or solid that I wish to choose limits for and then I can go into my specify limits tab and enter in the lower and upper linear limits values. So I've repeated and done this for the b-axis head and additionally for the lower turret. I can then go into my jog machine function and I can choose to jog the machine to test the axial limits that I've set. Now in this case for this particular machine tool we mentioned that various components share axes. For example, the B-axis head moves in X1 and the lower turret moves in X2. So within our junk function what we see is we have a pull down drop menu in which we can specify either the upper X slide so we can test our movements there for X1 and additionally for our turret X slide in X2. This is the same for the Z axis. In this case, I can specify the movement for the B axis head in Z, and additionally from the drop down menu, the Z axial movement for the lower turret. Having incorporated limits into this machine tool, I'm now ready to go into my part example. So, from my browser, just going to load in my current part and if I go to the part view what we can see is we have some pre-programmed features we have a simple facing operation turning we then have a central pocket machined using polar interpolation we also have four holes again machined using polar coordinates so X and C and finally we have an outside pattern of side features machined using uh, the y-axis in this particular case. So if I play through a 3D simulation we'll see we have our initial facing operation we then have the turning and we have our pocket, hole and side features programmed with no issues like so. If I now go into my machine tool simulation. We can now test that the programming of the part is within the travel limits of the machine. So we had no issues with the central, pa uh, central pocket feature or with the holes machined both using polar interpolation. As I mentioned pattern of side features we wanted to use X and Y and in this case we can see we have a warning to pop up to say that we're outside of the travel limits in this case we've exceeded the X axial minimum limit. If I say OK and replay the simulation from where we left off we can see we have more over travel the programming for these side features isn't going to work in this particular case so I have various options in which I can address this issue. So I'm going to come into my pattern. The first option is simply to deselect to cut the feature using y-axis coordinates but in this case I can also try using different C angle uh, in order to continue machining the side features using the y-axis. So I'm going to interactively select the C angle. I'm just going to choose a position roughly on the model like so. You can see that's approximately 70 degrees. I'm just going to round that up to 70 like so. Say apply and OK. 
and I can go ahead and rerun my machine simulation. So in this case, indexing the C angle to 70 degrees prior to machining the side features solves the issue of our travel limits.